Joining me now in studio is uh, Bruno Pietraschi, uh, President of South and East Africa Business Unit for Coca-Cola Company, to talk about the investment and opportunities that exist for the company on the continent. Our colleague from East Africa, Michael Mugisha, is also a part of this conversation. Michael, uh, Bruno, uh, nice to talk to you. So we're talking about soft drinks. And I hear a lot of people aren't drinking soft drinks as much as they used to before, but you've come in as the president of Eastern Southern Africa to try and perhaps change this or try and find more uh, profitable areas for Coke on the continent. Tell us what your plans are. Um, our growth strategy starts with the consumer at the center of it. Um, and we try to identify what are the consumer needs uh, and where they are headed. Uh, and we uh, foresee a lot of potential for growth, not only in sparkling soft drinks, which have been growing and will continue to grow, but also in new beverages like juices, uh, teas, uh, isotonics, energy drinks. So we want to uh, provide a broad set of offers that can help the consumer uh, throughout its uh, hydration needs throughout the day. Uh, after building brands that are relevant and uh, are uh, in love uh, for those consumers, we want to ensure that they have a pervasive distribution, that they can uh, be encountered by the consumers on an arm's reach of desire. In South Africa alone, we reach about uh, 240,000 uh, point of sales in which you can find mm -hmm. uh, our products. By doing so, All right, loved I'll brands, pervasive distribution, we want to create shared values. Mm -hmm. Value for our employees, value for our customers, value for our partners, and value for the communities in which we operate. In Africa, this is a critical piece of our equation. And hopefully by doing so, we'll have money to reinvest and keep the whole engine growing. All right. Uh, of course, Bruno, we did speak to the managing director from uh, Kenya just a few days ago, Daryl Wilson, and he said that uh, Coca-Cola is looking to add about 50 more new products. Tell me, how has this conversation transpired? Probably uh, 20 or 30 years ago when we went to a restaurant, everyone would drink the same thing. Uh, now, if I go out with my family, everyone wants a different thing, be it a different category or a different flavor. And if I extrapolate that to the, I mean, almost half a billion consumers in Africa, they have different needs, not only different needs across different people, but also different needs across the day. What you drink in breakfast is different from what you drink at lunch, in a uh, break from work. We at the Coca-Cola company want to be positioned to serve the consumer throughout all the needs throughout the day. And therefore, it's provoking more of innovation, more of uh, new entries, more of category. I think uh, 2018 uh, was probably the year in our history in Africa that we launched more products. But I think it's not going to last long. 2019, it's likely to be already another year of, uh, of breaking records on that. But again, because the consumer is asking for it and we are trying to match what the consumer needs. Mm. And of course, I mean, uh, the consumer all over the world is, is concerned about their health, um, um, cutting down on, on, on sugar, making a better choices. And many soft drink companies like yourselves are having to, to adapt. So I'm just trying to understand these new offerings that you're planning to roll out. Uh, to what degree will they be aligned to more healthier choices? And also sort of the, 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 the long-term plans for the existing uh, cool drinks, as we call them here in South Africa, that are very high in the sugar and as a result, also uh, very high in, in the tax that you have to pay? Uh, we do uh, believe that we have to offer choice for the consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are probably the company that offers the broadest set of choice because we have perversive distribution, including of the diet lights and zero uh, products. But our strategy will be uh, we we'll continue being offering the consumer a choice of high, medium, or low uh, levels of sugars. 
Interesting enough, you mentioned uh, ab about uh, taxes. Since the implementation of, of the tax, we have uh, taken the challenge of continuing innovating uh, our products. We have reduced our sugar footprint by about 25% uh, since uh, the last uh, two years and we'll continue innovating to bring the consumers better solutions in terms of taste and in terms of price points. Into your course, uh, we did see uh, Coca Cola's uh, market share in the east of the continent with real value share standing stable. But when we talk about retail and total volume share, we saw a very big decline in the year 2017. Tell me, as a big player, or actually the biggest player in the east of the continent when it comes to carbonated drinks and soft drinks, what sort of strategies are you putting in place to see a bounce back on the scene? Look, um, uh, we uh, have a strong position in sparkling soft drinks and we have uh, uh, the benefit and the onus of leading the category towards higher growth. So uh, bringing innovation to the category so that we can become more relevant to uh, the core targets, be it uh, teenagers or young adults. And we have some uh, pan-African programs around that like Coca-Cola Studio, which plans to connect music and bring passion uh, to our brands. Uh, and even Copa Coca-Cola, which is target at stimulating a healthier and balanced uh, lifestyle for uh, teenagers, uh, both of which are aimed at creating more passion for our brands. In addition to that, uh, we have to have a relevant uh, price and package architecture that uh, delivers to the consumer what they need at the time that they need. And last but not least, a superb execution at the point of sales in which uh, we have a code exposition of our products in which we keep bringing the customers and the consumers relevant propositions to help them uh, manage their business. I mean, uh, other than the, the diversification of the, the, the new products that you uh, did mention um, or the other products that you mentioned, um, your juices, iced teas and, and water, and I do understand you've got some exposure there already. But what about following the footsteps of your, your the parent company of Coke? They just made a big uh, deal to buy a, a coffee company, Costa Coffee, there in the UK. There's talks about Coke also experimenting with, with cannabis-infused uh, cool drinks. What are the plans uh, for going into coffee here in the continent and perhaps other infused drinks as well? Uh, we're very excited about uh, the imminent uh, cost acquisition that has been announced uh, two weeks ago, roughly. Uh, we are starting to think about the plans of deploying uh, this brand uh, in the continent. More to come. More to come, okay. So you're not giving away any details there. But then, um, you know, Bruno, ha help me also understand here. So, I mean, South Africa, by far the uh, most uh, uh, advanced um, economy on the continent, although arguably so uh, in some corners, um, the economy is also in, in very much of a slump. And our president has reiterated to global investors everywhere, in fact, he's just come from New York, about um, increased investments into, into the country. Uh, how, how much is, 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 is are you planning uh, in your tenor to, to, to plow into South Africa's economy? Um, we operate in South Africa as a system, uh, meaning Coca-Cola Company and its bottling partners, Coca-Cola Beverages Africa and Peninsula Beverages. Um, we, as a system, have a plan to invest more one than $1 billion uh, in the development of the South Africa market in the upcoming uh, five years. Uh, these uh, investments are geared to ensuring that we have the right supply chain infrastructure, manufacturing, logistics, and also that we have the right marketing approach supporting uh, our brands to reach the, the consumers. We are very excited about the growth potential of South Africa and the growth potential of uh, the continent uh, as a whole. Uh, we have to continue partnering with the government uh, to ensure that the right conditions for investments are in place. We are very confident that uh, Mr. President uh, has uh, an open uh, view on listening and partnering with uh, the private sector. So I think we are in a very good moment in time 
to double down in, in South Africa and more broad broadly in the, in the African continent. Allow me to jump in again, uh, maybe for one of my last questions. We did see Coca-Cola, that conversation that Fifi talked about, uh, trying to make uh, cannabis-infused uh, drinks. Now, we do know that, of course, Africa, maybe just one economy, has legalized the use of, of uh, marijuana or cannabis. Uh, doesn't this limit uh, the size of a market that you can actually use uh, these uh, drinks in? Look, um, um as uh, the consumers will have different tastes and, uh, and, and, and different preferences, we at the Coca-Cola company will do much more experimentation than in the past. Uh, the experimentation doesn't, need, doesn't mean that everything will succeed. On the contrary, uh, we have to test, learn, and hopefully learn fast from our failures to build a stronger cases. So without disclosing any of the innovation that we're doing, you should expect much more experiments around the globe. Uh, and I think Africa will have its own role uh, given uh, the nature or the specific nuances of its ingredients uh, and the specific nuances of the taste profile of the people in, in Africa. So it's gonna play an important role for the Coca-Cola company in terms of experimentation. But uh, again, uh, this is at the center of this experimentation is the consumer and what we believe uh, we have to do to better serve the consumer. Mm. Michael, you're sounding a bit disappointed there about the cannabis-infused drinks. If you want to try it, should it come to South Africa, come through. But uh, Bruno, I mean, just uh, I suppose to passing question, are you, you're, you're no stranger about the volatility of emerging markets, uh, having worked extensively uh, throughout uh, the company, throughout the various uh, economies. But right now, uh, there's heightened uncertainty in emerging markets and there are real fears that it will, will, will affect, affect growth. I mean, to, 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 to what degree does this make your plans of doing business in, in many emerging markets on the continent a bit more difficult? Actually, I, I see it as a great opportunity. Okay. Uh, uh, I've had the, the pleasure to work literally with the hal half of the world during the time I've been in Coca-Cola. Uh, with the exception of Asia, I've worked uh, uh, practically everywhere. And personally, I take much more energy and much more pleasure in volatile uh, environments such as Latin America, where I come from, as, as well as Africa. I think uh, we need to make the right choices and the right bets, if you wish, to prepare ourselves for better times. I have no doubt that in the continent with a population that is greater than 1 billion, in the region that I manage roughly half a billion people, uh, that uh, will grow over time. It might not be a linear grow, it might have some bumps in the roads, but these moments of bumps in the roads are exactly the moments that we have to double down, we have to commit to investments, we have to strengthen our partnerships with the local communities and with the local governments to emerge even stronger. So. Um, it's, it, it, it's an interesting moment in time in which the choices that we make now can put us uh, collectively in a much better position in the years to come. And I'm very excited about it. Well, that's, that's good. I'm excited that we still have some new products to quench our thirst through the up and down times of the economies. But Bruno, thanks so much for your time. That was uh, Bruno uh, Pietracci, uh, President of South and East Africa Business Unit Coca-Cola Company.